Hello, and welcome to Climate Unboxed. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the CDS API Python package, which will allow us to directly connect to the Climate Data Store and download large data sets in automated ways using Python scripts. Now, you don't have to worry if you don't have a background in Python. This is exceedingly simple. You can just make small edits to the file and actually use the API without any prior knowledge of Python whatsoever. So there are four steps that we have to undertake once only. The first consists of the registration on the CDS site. The second step then is to install the CDS API package in Python that we will use to download the data. We then need to set up the SSH keys, which is essentially to avoid the use of a password each time. Last but not least, we need to go to the website once to tick the box to allow the permissions to download the data. And then we are ready to download the data of our choice. So the first step we need to consider is the registration. So if you go to the web page that's indicated, Below, you can see a button on the top right corner, Login Stroke Register. You can click on that and click Create New Account. You'll need to enter your email address, your name, country, sector, and also if you scroll up, you can give information about your organization, accept the terms and conditions, and then click on the green button below, Create New Account. You will receive an email, which you will need to click to confirm the address, and then you'll be able to go to the login page, enter your chosen password and log in. If everything's done correctly, you'll see your name displayed on the top right hand side. So to install the CDS API, you will need to open a terminal window. I'm using a Mac here under Ubuntu. You can also find a terminal window under the menu. And it's as easy as this. We need the pip3 command and then we type space install and then CDS API. And then it will download the package and install it directly. And we have a message successfully installed CDS API. If you want to quickly test that it's been installed correctly, you can then open Python 3. I'm using Python 3 and pip3 and simply type import CDS API. step is to put into place the API SSH keys. Now this is a special code that we put into a file that basically replaces the need to have to type in a password each time we want to access the database. Now there's a wiki API how-to page which is extremely helpful. It has all the information on it that we will need. Scroll down you'll find that there's this section entitled Install the CDS API Key. Now, if you're not logged in, it will just have this generic text here. So what you need to do is ensure that you click the red button and that you're logged in and that your name is displayed here in the top right hand corner of the web browser. Now, if that is done, then in this window here, you should see displayed text rather similar to this. So there is a URL address and then there's a key displayed below inside this box. If it's not displayed, you may need to click the reload button on your browser and that should ensure that the new information pops up inside this window. So then what you need to do is you need to highlight that information displayed in this window and press Control C to copy it, or you can use copy from the edit uh, menu of the browser. Now I've got the information here in this window, and I will copy it. Let's try that again. Okay, these are fake IDs. <laughs> then you need to open a terminal window, ensure that you're in the home directory, so you can just press CD for change directory, or CD if you wish, space, dollar and then home in capital letters it's important that it's in capital letters 
If we type print working directory, pwd, we see that we're in the home directory, in my case, users Tompkins. And then you need to open a text editor. Now I use Emacs, and the name of the file is very important. It needs to begin with a dot. And then we have cdsapirc. So now we have a window launch. This is my Emacs window. And I'm just going to paste that key into that window URL. And here we have the key just below. So I will save that and exit the window. So we have now installed the API key. So if we scroll up to the top of this screen, we can click on data sets now. And just as we saw in my previous video, we can open the product types. I'm going to click on reanalysis. And now we're going to use era five data on single levels. There's actually two options now, an earlier period from 1950 to 1978, which is in a beta release, as you can see but we're going to use the later period, so I'm going to scroll down and find ERA 5 monthly average data on single levels. So I'll click here, and we need to go to the Download Data tab, and we're going to select Monthly Average Reanalysis. I'm selecting 2 meter temperature again as an example, and we scroll down. Now I'm going to actually hit clear all and I'm only going to select one year as an example, 2020. I've got all of the months selected and the time, I've only got one option, but it needs to be selected because it's monthly average data. We're selecting data for the whole region and we've got net CDF selected. That's the format term. Now, if you haven't used the interface before, to look, download data, you will need to click on this license box here to accept the terms. Now you only need to do that once and it's already been stored for me on the system. You will remember from my earlier video that we then could hit the green button submit form in order to use the web interface to download the data. But now instead, we're actually going to click on this green button on the left, show API request. And that reveals this window below with a small piece of Python code. Now I want to highlight this code and press Control C to copy it. And then I'm going to go back to my terminal window and I'm going to open now a new file. I'm just gonna call it download.py. So this is a Python Code. I'm using Emacs again, but you can use any text editor of your choice. And I'm going to paste that code inside the window. Now, as I said at the start of the video, if you are not used to Python, if not used Python before, that doesn't matter because you can see that the length of this code is very short and is extremely self-explanatory. So the first line of this code says import CDS API. That simply imports the package that we've just installed. We then set up an incidence of a client, but you don't have to know what that means, okay? And then there's this retrieve command. And you will recognize immediately the information that we've just selected. So there's the reanalysis type, single levels, monthly means, product type, monthly mean reanalysis, two meter temperature, year is 2020, and so on. And we have a list of months. Time, the format equals net CDF. Now, the last entry on this line is the name of the file name, and it has a generic name, download.nc. Now, you may want to change that to something more appropriate. For example, t2m underscore 2020.nc. I'm going to save that and exit. And now to actually test out our download, we simply need to type in Python 3 space download.py, which is the name of my program where I've saved that snippet of code. And I press enter. You can see that my job has been sent to the system there and is currently waiting in the queue. So if everything has worked correctly for you up until this point, 
you should see the same without any errors. And now we simply have to wait. And now you can see it's downloaded a file directly to my desktop. I'll do ls minus ltr. And there we see the file that has been downloaded. And we can open it with NC View. And there we have it. One data file downloaded directly to our desktop. So you see, we only need to do these steps once. Once all of these steps are put into place, you only need to get the example script from the web interface and you can download directly the data of choice to your desktop. The advantage of the API is once you've got it set up, you can write simple loops to download far greater data volumes than the web interface allows. And you can even run your script automatically in the background at regular intervals. Now I'm going to show you how to do the loops in a separate video. I hope this has been useful and don't forget to click subscribe if that's so. And I'll see you soon again at Climate Unboxed.